Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Genius Podcast. I am so excited about this episode because we have an amazing guest. As usual, my name is Halima Magaji and I'm the host of the Genius Podcast. And with me, I have the amazing, the beautiful, the Jumoke Smiley. Hi Jumoke. Hi, Hi Halima. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. So today we're going to be talking about traveling in Nigeria. So you're a travel content Yay. creator. Um, <laughs> yes, you guys should follow her at the Jumoke Smiley. She has some amazing travel content. If you're someone who is into the travel space, then she's your go-to. She'll give you all the guide that you need. So traveling in Nigeria is... I would say it's a very it's a very difficult task. It's a Herculean task, to be honest. Um, yeah. I would start out with the fact that right now, I can't remember the last time I went on a vacation because the prices of things are ridiculous. Well, My thanks to Naira. Oh, the dollar to Naira <laughs> exchange is crazy. Yeah. My friend wanted to travel recently with his kids for holiday. You know, it's August, so they're yeah, on holiday so and everything. So they wanted to go to the UK and one person's ticket was like two million. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> is it shocking your face for me, actually? Fees, yeah, I know, right? That's somebody's fees. <laughs> to go and, and that's somebody's one year house rent. Ha! <laughs> go, just for you to go and do La Vida Loca in the UK. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. It's really expensive. So, I mean, how have you been able to do it? Being able to, you know, travel despite the fact that costs keeps going up things are more expensive apart from that visa you still have visa to put into mm -hmm. consideration you have transportation mm -hmm. accommodation and accommodation is usually in their currency which yeah. is dollar or pounds so how do you get around that you know okay so honestly i would say um i have paused all of my international trips until december so i have a personal culture of crossing over in a different city or in a different country and um, right now I've started planning my crossover trip and I must tell you it is super expensive yes. <laughs> super expensive but honestly I feel like in this time most especially if you end in Naira you just have to cut your coat according to your material you have to. because so right now I'm, I'm traveling within Nigeria I'm not even bothered about traveling outside Nigeria because fam <laughs> it's crazy but yeah it is what we have to do because I've been it's it's our passion. So <laughs> I mean, so traveling in Nigeria, I know that to be honest with you, I haven't really gotten the chance to explore Nigeria. I think the only states I've ever been to is I've been to Edo State because my parents are my dad is from Edo State. Nice. I've been to I'm going to Abeokota this Saturday. Hey. Yes, my friend <laughs> sent me one play that we should go and watch in Abeokota. Oh, that's I, nice. No, at first I wasn't I wasn't keen on it because mm. 8 a.m. I have to meet during by 8 a.m i'm Ooh. not doing that <laughs> but she forced me she forced me she forced me so i'm going tomorrow i'm nice. excited about that um since i'm not able to travel out of the country at least being able to explore nigeria a lot of people have the mentality that there aren't a lot of things that you can do in nigeria and i've always had that mentality to be honest and that's one of the reasons why i don't think and also security i don't think yeah. i've ever been keen about traveling within nigeria even top of mind i can't think of very interesting places within Nigeria that I can travel to. I know that there's the IITA in Ibadan. I know Obudukato Ranch, but I don't think, I don't know. If That's that my existed. favorite destination. Are you serious? <laughs> yes. I don't know. Every single time someone mentions that place, I feel like maybe it's dilapidated or... Oh, well, I honestly, it is, honestly, I won't lie. But it's it's actually not bad, bad. So it depends on um how you want to like plan your trip. So it's usually best not to plan on your own. It's usually best to, you know, hire a tour operator oh, okay. to put it together when you're going to Budu. Because honestly, trust me, if you are trying to order food from their restaurants, you won't get it. So if you have a trip planned out for you by a tour operator, you, they, would, they would, you know, get to cater for all of your need. Oh, okay. And they will give you all of the information you need, like you get heads up. Like now, MTN does not work. Um, MTN is the only network that works in Obudu. Okay. If you have a glue or an Airtel line, it's definitely not going to work. So if you are going on your own and you do not have all of those information, you are going it to, yeah, it, it will be very, very stressful. So sometimes it is better. And then talking about um, security, yeah. We would all agree that Nigeria is what it is, <laughs> right? But then again, I mean, this past couple of months, since January, I have traveled a lot within Nigeria. And one thing that um, 
I, I also shared it on my on my Instagram and I'm also going to share it here again is that yes, Nigeria is safe to travel, but it depends on who you know and who you talk to. So it depends on the kind of research you make. True. So personally, if I'm going anywhere, I ask a lot of people questions. I know a lot of people in the industry that have been there, right? Or even people, locals, people that live there. So they would be the ones to give you all of the information you need. They are going to tell you, oh, so there is this particular route that maybe kidnapping happens here. Do not pass through this place. Pass through here. And that's if, if I am going to be driving, right? But if I'm going to, like, you know, be going, like, um, going through a commercial transportation, I just go with um the people that like go through that route like every, every time, time. Yeah. so they know they know where to pass through and where not to pass through so i mean it's just it's just basically that you just have to research and then you have to also be optimistic that nothing is going to happen but for real if you if you make your proper research if you ask people question if you ask the locals i mean you'll be fine so i have a question what's your favorite state to go to it seems like you travel within Nigeria. <laughs> Ah, I don't know. For a favorite state, I'm honestly not sure. I would say for a favorite state, maybe Lagos is my favorite state. But if we're talking about places, yeah, Obudu, Obudu Kato Ranch is my favorite place to go to. I mean, it's so beautiful. And then having, um, understanding how the place works really, I don't think there is a problem for me. However, couple of other people would have issues like i mean a lot of issues yeah. but honestly that's my favorite destination and hopefully i hope um, they renovate it soon because they, they said they have new management and they are working on renovating it and all of that so i'm really hoping so so apart from obudukato ranch what are that how many states in nigeria have you visited i think i've visited over 20 but well, i wow. really cannot say which I can I don't know the exact number, but it's over twenty. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Do you travel every month, or how do you pace yourself when you're traveling? Yeah, most times by monthly. Most times by monthly. So by monthly being every two months. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow, that's really interesting. <laughs> really interesting. Do you have any tips for people that are trying to explore within Nigeria more? And I know that there's like a myth that there aren't so many things to do within Nigeria. So. Do, do you have advice for people that are trying to explore within Nigeria but have that mentality that there aren't so many things to do within Nigeria? Okay, um, so I would say, um, first of all, be open-minded. That's the first and foremost thing. And then the second thing would be that um, you, have to, you have to probably just research, right? Saying that there are not a lot of things to do within Nigeria is actually not true. It depends on what you are looking for. So first of all, you need to ask your question. You need to ask yourself a question that what exactly am I looking to experience? What kind of experience am I actually looking for? So, I mean, there are like a thousand and one things to do. Even here in Lagos, there are like a lot of things to do. When you go to Abelkuta, for instance, she's going to Abelkuta now. I'm giving you heads up on what to do. So, I mean, there are lots of things to do. What do you want? Do you want, like, history? Do you want adventure? Do you just want to live like a local? Do you understand? Yeah. So, if you're looking for history, for instance, now, say you're going to Abelkuta, you're looking for history. So, definitely go to Olumo Rocks. Yeah. Then also go to Kuti Heritage Museum. That's where Fela grew up. So, you're going to, like, learn a lot of things around Fela. In short... Beyond Fela and his family, you're also going to learn a lot of things that happened in Abelkuta at that time where Fela and his parents were existing within that area. Yeah. So, um, and if you're also looking for um, like immersing yourself into whatever it is they do there, there is the Adire market mm -hmm. where you can even see how they do Adire. You can even you know, do an Adire by your own self, right? You can go shopping. There is also the OOPL in Abelkuta where you even get to learn about when OOPL is Olusha Gwambas on Job Presidential oh, yes. Library. Um, so you are going to learn about him when he was the president and beyond that you are going to learn about Nigeria as a whole and then even different countries that collaborated with Nigeria at that time. So, I mean, you just need to ask yourself that what do I, what am I really looking for? And also in Abelkuta, try eating of father rice and the sauce itself i mean father rice is originally from abelkuta so why not try it out i mean there are a lot of things to do within nigeria it just depends on what you are looking for right so i'll say that's it 
I think that's very interesting. I've actually been to the Obasanjo Presidential Library. I was supposed to do my jam in Lagos, but they didn't have a center in Lagos, so I had to go and do it in Abel Okuta. Mm -hmm. And I remember we stayed in there's a hotel in that yeah. within that place, and then yeah. we stayed in the hotel. Mm -hmm. My mom and I, and it was such a lovely experience. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm going to go back now that you've yeah. me. <laughs> I think you I'm going go to go back. back tomorrow. Yes, definitely. Um, and I think it's very interesting what you said about immersing yourself in the culture. Mm -hmm. I think one thing that people don't realize, people think that traveling is about the luxury and the flashy things and all of that. But the real traveling experience is being able to learn about the culture, learn yeah. about the people. There was a time that I was in Wisconsin in the U.S. for about six to eight months, almost a year. And I didn't really, I was there for work. And to be honest, that was my best travel experience. Mm -hmm. I didn't really go to their parks. Wisconsin is known for their parks and their, it's like Disneyland. Mm -hmm. It's known for their parks, their resorts, all their excitement. I didn't really do that. But it's my best travel experience because I was able to work with the people. I was able to get an idea of what the people were like. Mm -hmm. I was able to create a family while I was there. I was able to immerse myself into their culture and yeah. what it was like. So I think that, I think people look for the wrong things in travel. Exactly. A larger percentage of, of time, people just want to take pictures yeah. when they travel. Like that's that's the highlight of traveling. I yeah. want to take pictures and show off to the people that I went to this place. But what really is in traveling is the experience, yes, which exactly. is rather interesting. Speaking of experience, there are bad experiences when it comes to travel. Mm, so I will I give agree. an example. I remember I went to Ghana last year. We're supposed to leave by 5 p.m. and we didn't leave till like 12 midnight, 1 a.m. Oof. Luckily for me, I had travel ex I had travel insurance, so I collected my compensation. Yes, nice. it was about seventy dollars per. It was about seventy dollars per after four hours of being stranded, mm -hmm. and so I collected my compensation. That's ah, good. I collected it. <laughs> I collected it. But yeah, so there are terrible experiences like that, and how are you able to manage that experience? Because we see it a lot. I feel like the the no offense, but the the airlines are very careless, except international airlines. Mm -hmm. A larger percentage of Nigerian airlines, and even some international airlines that get invoked into the Nigerian culture, mm -hmm. they they become very reckless. You have a flight, they move flights around, they cancel anyhow, they um, keep you stranded for hours. Mm -hmm. So how are you able to manage that when you're planning? How do you put that, how do you handle that when that occurs in the course of your travel? Okay, um, so I would say personally, I have not experienced, I've not, I, I've not had any bad experience that would make me want to like, you know, make use of my insurance here. But I have had um, a similar experience with somebody I planned a trip for and it was Green Africa. I mean, Nigerian Airlines, people need to really do better. Green Africa and up until today i still could not get my refund wow. i mean i had to pay her back with my personal money hoping to get my refund back and up until today i did everything i could and that was when i really wish um i really wish i don't know i, I think i'm going to ask you do we have insurance within nigeria like local insurance for travel no it's, it's yeah hard. so i think i i don't know if that would happen it would be really great because that was when i knew that i was just in um, a deep mess excuse my french yeah. and um it was just really terrible because i had to you know follow up send emails call them i even Somebody told me to drag them on feet. I did. But these people did not even do anything. They didn't, they didn't send me. So I was just like fighting a lost battle. And up until now, I still didn't get it. But I honestly wish there are like measures to these, these things like where we can, you know, deal with it, uh, honestly, for a local trip. But I think um, for international trips, I mean, there is insurance. So you're definitely going to, you know, um, your insurance is going to cover for it. Yeah. yeah so... I think that's I think that's very interesting, um, and I definitely agree with you that Nigerian airlines to do better. Are you out directly. <laughs> I'm not hiding. I'm not cutting through corners. I'm speaking my mind with my full chest. Yeah. You people need to do better. And whatever organization in Nigeria it is that manages them, I think it's Fan that manages them. Yeah. Or and I know there's IATA, International Af um, Airline. Ayata. Yeah, Ayata. Yeah, IATA. Yes, Ayata. I yeah, Ayata, I just wanted to make sure that I got it. Ayata, you guys need to, I don't know how you people want to have a meeting. I can plan the meeting for you people for free. I can bring all the stakeholders into the room. You need to do so much better. Um, I think another thing apart from that is also visa. 
There are so Ooh. many countries that have bundles. Do you know, I was thinking about it, honestly. So there was, there was this lady, Lade, she posted something. I don't know if you know her. She's, yeah, a, know she's an influencer. Mm -hmm. She posted something about the fact that um, in 2019... 19, I, I saw yeah, the post. Yeah, <laughs> that she traveled to the UK. Everything was about 500k. The, Dubai. To Dubai, was Dubai yes. I think Dubai and, and Abu was, Dhabi. Everything was 500k. You can't do that today. Never. You're not going to even cut half of your ticket. Yeah. Your, half <laughs> your ticket will not feel rich. That's, you know. So, and then she was talking about the fact that, you know, if you have, like, travel plans, you should actually execute them because yeah apart, asap yes <laughs> because apart from costs going up there's also visa bans yeah. and when i saw that post i was actually thinking about it and the truth of the matter is the nigerian government doesn't have a part to play in that i mean in negotiations yes they have a part to play mm -hmm. but the reason why they typically ban us is because nigerians go over there and make a mess of their exactly country. and i think we also have a role to play when it comes to it's so it's so interesting how something insignificant as myself can play a major role in world relations, yeah. in foreign relations mm -hmm. between countries. Mm -hmm. um, I, I saw that post and what came to my mind was Nigerians need to do better. When they go abroad, they need to... And honestly, I don't blame them because here in Nigeria, they can do whatever they like. We don't really have... Our law enforcement don't check people and put people in place and all of that. And so they take that attitude abroad and they mess up the country. Yeah. I think we need to do better as a nation because what we don't realize is that every single thing that we do, we represent Nigeria where we go. Mm -hmm. And that can lead to things like visa bans and all of that. Mm -hmm. Apart from Dubai, I know there was another country. I think it was Seychelles. Yes, yeah, Seychelles. Yeah. That banned us. That was so painful. It's been lifted now though. It has? Yeah. Oh my <laughs> glory. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ah, oh, that's so good. I think that also shows that Nigerians play a major role yeah. in because if you look at even the UK, I know that there was a point whereby my parents were like, do not go and school in the UK. Mm -hmm. My two elder brothers went to school in the UK and after that they stopped any one of us in the family from going to school in the UK. Mm -hmm. So you'd rather go to the US. My sister is in the US now, or you go to Canada. Mm -hmm. And the reason why was because the UK would not permit you to work. They will not give you a work permit. They will just send you back to the country immediately yeah. after you graduate. Mm -hmm. But now I think they're trying to change that because they see the impact and the, the cash flow that we bring yeah. into their country. So I think, which also makes me question the myth that we don't have money for travel. Honestly, who says that? Because I heard somebody gathered 22 million naira to Jakba. That's true. <laughs> the UK a lot of money. They gave 430,000 Nigerians. I think I saw a report about mm -hmm. it recently, visas mm -hmm. this year alone. And the year is not, we're still mm -hmm. in August. And this, this person just, this person left with his wife. They don't even have kids yet. Yeah. I think they got a work visa or so. And sponsorship and everything. So I mean, gathering twenty-two million naira. You know how much that that's is—a lot of money. So I mean, Nigerians have money. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's have, true. Have a shit ton of money. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you have any tips for people that are trying to go abroad and how they can save costs, what tips would you give them? Okay. So like you said earlier, that Lade said, if you have plans of traveling, just do it ASAP because trust me, nothing is going to drop. Nothing is coming down. Travel will keep getting expensive. Whether we agree or not, it will keep getting expensive. So if you have to, so for instance, now my December trip, I already booked my my ticket and this ticket, um, I, when I was supposed to book it, I couldn't because I didn't have enough money. I think I was like 200K shots. And then um, three days later, this it was supposed to be 200K. The price had gone to, I needed to balance it with like 700K. Just imagine distance of three days. So as soon as you have that money, whatever it is that you can secure, just secure it. If it is your ticket, secure it. However, if you are going to like secure your ticket, be sure about... Um, we are going to is the visa easy to get if it is like all those countries that you are going to really strive at for visa i would advise that you might want to like get your visa first but yeah overall if you have you if you have to plan things like months and months ahead just do that that's like the best travel tip i can give anyone right yeah. now plan ahead like way way ahead i mean it's going to save you a lot of money except of course if you have plenty of money 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you like to book for two, I'm very available. I can always take leave. Mr. Debo will understand. <laughs> I can always take leave. Okay, then another thing that I wanted to also mention in addition to what you said was about the fact that ap exploring within Nigeria, but also exploring within Africa. Yeah. I know Africa has a lot of travel destinations that are so fantastic. I cannot wait to go to Zanzibar. Yeah. I can't wait to go to Kenya. Mm -hmm. I think those are beautiful countries. That very, have very really beautiful. Nice yeah. Travel. Yeah. And then there are also a lot of countries. I mean, the whole of West African countries are visa free. That's visa true. on arrival so yeah that really works i mean visa free not even visa on arrival visa free yeah for all of them so you might want to just seize that opportunity but then i've heard people also talk about the fact that a lot of african countries are not so open to nigerians yeah and then i mean they are quite hostile to nigerians yeah. and i don't know why but the moment they hear your accent your nigerian accent i mean before they even look at your passport so um last year one of my friends traveled to five East African countries on a row and he had he had issues in a couple of countries. The moment they hear his accent, <laughs> it is trouble. Let's say you're Nigerian and if he says yes, I mean he cannot even deny it yeah, because he has a Nigerian passport, passport then it is troubles. There was a time that he had to even like change his route. That particular border because East African countries he was doing road trip between them. It had to now like take 24 hours to go to a different border because wow. the person that was attending to him then just wasn't having it and the person was like you cannot come through you can't why because you're nigerian okay so why again no other reason so he now had to change his route travel for 24 hours again to go through another border then that was when he now got entrance into the country yeah. so i mean yeah i don't know why but honestly I would still blame it on us Nigerians, like you said earlier. A lot of Nigerians will just go to certain places and really misbehave. And it does not make sense because they are also putting others in trouble. Those of us that just genuinely want to travel and see the world, they are putting us in trouble. So, yeah, we, we really need to do better. That's just it. Okay, so rounding up. Are there, is there any other advice that you would give to someone that's traveling either within or outside Nigeria? Hmm. Okay, so I'll just say, I think I already said this earlier, be open-minded. Um, sometimes your plans will not go as you've planned it. There would always be things, issues that would arise. Just be open-minded, whatever happens. Just uh, also be focused and always have a plan B that, okay, what if this does not work? What am I going to do if this route does not work? Because, I mean, in Africa, there are a lot of, most especially, like, when you're traveling within Africa, there are a lot of issues of border closing and stuff. So you might just want to, you know, plan things accordingly, have a plan B, and then be open-minded. All right, Jumoke, thank you so much for joining us on this episode, and I hope hope you guys have learned a thing or two about you know traveling within nigeria within africa and across the world other than that please it is very very important that you always have travel insurance when you're traveling outside of nigeria it saves you a lot of financial risk if your baggage gets delayed you are, if your baggage gets lost you are covered if your flight is delayed you are covered if you fall ill i remember there's a time i always tell this story there was a time i fell ill while i was in wisconsin in the u.s and my bill was one thousand five hundred dollars mm. for something that in nigeria is 300 naira the medicine they gave me in nigeria is 300 naira and they gave me wow. that same medicine over there and it was a thousand i didn't stay i wasn't on admission i didn't stay in the hospital <laughs> they looked at me gave me the medication and i went my way and i got a bill of one thousand five hundred dollars the next day i said then it was i think 750k when i had converted it as i then that's a lot. It, it was, was crazy. What? For just one medicine. And the irony is I did have travel insurance, but I wasn't educated about the impact of travel insurance. So I could have avoided paying that money. Yeah. I ended up paying it, which was till today I'm pained about it. <laughs> so if you're not feeling fine, you are covered. If someone dies while they're over there, you need to repatriate them. You are covered as well. So these are the things that you are covered with travel insurance. It is very important for you to always have travel insurance when you're traveling. Thank you so much again, Jumo Kerry. Thanks for, for having me. And you guys, look out for our next episode. We're going to be here, as always, giving you guys the gist, the ins and outs, the tips and the guides. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.